Nice one. Okay, okay, a big round of applause for Johannes Telman and Axolotti. So the scope of this project is um, bringing batch-based programming to embedded hardware. So it's like a blend of, let's say, Reactor Max MSP with Arduino. So it, um, it brings some sort of the accessibility of graphical programming to hardware. Hardware means that you can um, make your instrument or whatever uh, and uh, the use cases are really really wild and very wide in scope because um, once you can patch up things you can really add anything you like sort of um, and going to hardware without computer it, it reduces a lot of complexity in, in the setup and I think uh, if you're playing, uh, the interface of a computer is a big distraction to to actual playing. If you play with, together with people using a laptop, it often ends up like, hey, wait a second, I'm going to change my setup and give me a while. And before you know, you're, you've lost hours. Um, so uh, this is a picture of the board in... Um, in it's actually the, the previous revision already. So there is um, on board there is stereo um, audio input, stereo audio output headphone jack, um, micro USB connector to connect to the computer, a slot for a micro SD card for storing samples. Oops. And then um, new this year is a USB host connector, so you can use an off-the-shelf MIDI controller uh, that. Recently, lots of MIDI controllers don't have a MIDI plug anymore, but only have a USB connector. So now you can plug that right into the board. Um, and there are some LEDs and switches. And, and then the 9080 MIDI connector standard is still useful in many cases. Um, so without, without any soldering, you can plug things in, and quite a lot of them. Um, ranging from guitar to line inputs to keyboards, controllers. Um, on the other hand, on the on the rear side of the board, there are like lots of general purpose connector pins where you, to do, let's say, just almost anything. Um, but the real, uh, the, yeah, lots of work went went into into building software that can expose um, the possibilities because it's, it's one thing to have all the possibilities, the, the hard job is to expose it. Just, it's all open source and, and I think I, here's where I want to make a difference. There's a lot of open source sound things, um, but no one is actually editing or changing the source code because it's, it's not intended to really few people deal with, with uh, source code um, that just want something to run. My editor is actually a source code generator, so it brings editing the source code quite a few steps closer to, to um, users. Um, so, um, oh, that was wrong button. So uh, let's go back. In 2014, I did a lot of um, use cases and worked with test users. And um, at the end of 2014, I came finally to open source uh, release. Um, 2015 started with a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo, reaching 100, close to 190% of the of its uh, target. Um, I added two features. One promised on the campaign was the USB host port. I also added SDRAM. Um, this allows now for 83 seconds of delay, or it could also be used as sample memory or many other use cases um, beyond my imagination. But I'm confident that the 
community will, will have um, uh, use for it. And um, preparing for production. Um, it's something that needs a lot of care because you can't, you can't reverse um, a production machine. For, um, I, I made a submission for, um, for the Cymatics Challenge, but I was not one of the winners, um, and that's fine. Uh, nevertheless, I want to show you the, the result of my creation. So it's, uh, it's one patch. Uh, oh, I lost the screen. Let me check again. Duplicate. OK, this is like a, a patch I made. Um, and that should be running now. Um, so this is controllable by, you see, if I change the sliders here, you see um, like the the dials changing to the value, uh, and so it's um, and I, oh, could I have some sound too? And, and there should be a sound feed. Don't turn it up too hard. Actually, the, the sound is a side effect of the visuals because I designed it. Could you switch the feed to to the camera on this? Camera one, thank you. Right, so um, the scope of Axolotl does not extend to video, but um, by generating uh, audio signals, connecting to an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is basically a device that plots out the, the curves coming out, the, the waves coming out of the sound output. And um, so I started creating sounds not by listening to them, but by looking at them and uh, trying to find interesting patterns and connecting that to a MIDI controller. So it's sort of a visual instrument. Uh, yeah. It was a quick, ha quick hack. Um, I had only one day to spend on developing and capturing and submitting. Because um, I, I sort of have had more important things to do. But I hope you like the result. It's sort of based on the Lisa Ju patterns, if someone is familiar with that. Basically, if you, if you remember Mott's classes, if you had a sine and a cosine running against each other, they would define a circle. And if you would double the frequency, we'd get like a, a figure of eight shape. And yeah, different frequencies produce different um, shapes. And instead of sine waves, you can use other shapes as well. You, and you could involve like, instead of doing it in x, y, two dimensions, you could do like three dimensions and apply a rotation matrix. And that, that's, that's when you see the cube pattern that um, is generating x, y, z coordinates and then rotating that back to x, y. Um, that's it for now. I now move back to the hackathon and hope to come with something new tomorrow. Thank you.